In this WrestleTalk news, has Cody Rhodes' return date from injury been revealed? Tony Khan slams WWE, calling them the enemy. And more on the Bray Wyatt wrestling return following a Twitter rebrand that suggests he may be WWE bound. So subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! So this year's Hell in a Cell is in the books, and while overall it's a rather unremarkable show for advancing the WWE landscape, it did feature some really darn good wrestling. Check out Ollie's review from earlier if you haven't already. You probably also noted though that things looked a little bit bleak for the main event matchup between Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes as it was announced ahead of the show that Rhodes had suffered a torn pectoral tendon while weight training. Cody both bravely and perhaps foolishly stepped into the cell with Rollins regardless, sporting a heck of a purple nurple and saying in a post match promo that he had insisted on competing and was only really allowed to do so because the most damage had already been done. The most damage. It was already the worst it could be and then he was like please slap me other man. But now that the advertised main event is out of the way and Cody hasn't disappointed those fans you would hope that he would go off and get his injury seen to though he's probably planning to set himself on fire on tonight's Raw instead. You just never know with Cody. You just never know. Now surgery and recovery for a torn pectoral will take quite a long time so Cody quite tragically with his current momentum will be out for the foreseeable. Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio noted that Rhodes could likely be targeting the Royal Rumble as a potential return date. Comparing Rhodes' injury to the torn quad suffered by Triple H, he said, hopefully he gets it taken care of and hopefully when he comes back that he will get the same treatment from the company or close to it that Paul Levesque did in similar circumstances with the quad. It probably won't be that way. Hopefully it'll be close because he's a main event guy. But I hope that Rhodes gets some of that, especially because of the way he left. Hopefully he gets the surgery. Hopefully he's okay by the Royal Rumble, which I guess would be about the target date would be right around there. So here's wishing Cody a speedy recovery and if he does come back in time for the Rumble just perfect to set you up for Wrestlemania against Roman Reigns isn't it? Now over in Cody's old stomping grounds AEW they've been enjoying the afterglow of last weekend's Double or Nothing and some new additions to their roster. Not that a pay view really stops them doing that. Tony Khan is just buying up people left and right and being like look what I got this week. Huh? What about this one? Uh, this one? How about this? One new face in the company is Stokely Hathaway, the former Malcolm Bivens from WWE, who Hathaway with words has become infamous for fake tweets from celebs promoting wrestling. Now, over the weekend, he shared a fake tweet from Mariah Carey calling for him to face Kazuchika Okada at AEW times NJPW Tatanoka vs. Campcom EX plus Alpha Forbidden Door. Now, in response, AEW president Tony Khan got in on the laugh, saying how much he enjoyed Hathaway's Twitter japes. He said it really just sunk in for me for the first time that Hathaway's infamous counterfeit tweets will now focus on AEW from now on. They've gone from something I begrudgingly saw as amazing content from a brilliant manager working for the enemy into 2022 AEW canon. That made my day. I mean, it's a bit extreme to go from friendly competition for viewers to legit viewing another major promotion as the enemy. But I mean, there you go. This town apparently ain't big enough for the both of them. But US TV does have enough space for 11 different Real Housewives series. Riddle me that, wrestling. We're going to stick with AEW now, who have had a rough week post Double or Nothing, as CM Punk was forced to step away from the ring for a while to deal with an injury, forcing the company to crown a new interim AEW champion at Forbidden Door. The Punk is not the only top star currently suffering, as Brian Danielson missed a scheduled appearance on Sunday due to an undisclosed injury he reportedly suffered at the pay-per-view the week prior. Now, the injury left Brian unable to travel by air to the event in New Bedford, Massachusetts, according to reporting from both Fightful Select and the Wrestling Observer. Brian Alvarez has then followed up with sources stating that the injury is thought to be nothing serious and that Brian will be out of action for one to two weeks. But elsewhere in the Wrestleverse, even more major injuries have sprung up. For instance, Matt Cardona turned woo 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 into a boo boo when he suffered a torn bicep during a match with Blake Christian at GCW Downward Spiral. Now, Cardona appeared at last night's GCW COS event to address the crowd and say he may be out for three to five months with this current injury. At the show, Cardona offered to lay down for Blake Christian but tried to swerve him and get the help from Chelsea Green 
though that didn't pan out. Cardona is also the current NWA World Heavyweight Champion and is set to defend the title against Nick Aldis at NWA Always Ready, though new plans for that event and for the title itself have not yet been announced. He's wishing Matt also a speedy recovery. Meanwhile, the former Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda, did his former workplace a huge solid on Sunday afternoon when he simply changed his Twitter name. Because Rotunda has been teasing that fans will get to see him very soon and then changed his Twitter name to Wyatt Six. Now this sparked rumour and speculation that he could be returning to WWE at Hell in a Cell, the spookiest of all of the pay-per-views, and led to spike in interest for the show and push through a bunch of sales on the secondary market for tickets. Who said he wasn't a draw? This man has drawn and he's not even in the company. He's drawn. Now obviously Wyndham was never really going to show up because he was at signing on Sunday afternoon for the Legends of the Ring in New York and is again going to be at one next Saturday in Woodbridge, New Jersey. So it seems like the WWE return this week is completely off the cards and potentially also at all. Now, while Wyatt has been rebranding himself, WWE have been advancing their own brand by filing a trademark for yet another new series with A&E. Promotion moved to trademark the name WWE Rivals. Now, the application states that it's a show about sports entertainment, entertainment services, namely the production and exhibition of a documentary series. So you would likely assume from the title that the show will be covering famous feuds from WWE history. Before we crack on with the show, we just need to thank Havan, RG, Bargy, Margie, Pargy, and $100 man CD Horver for their support on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. Now, one of the weirdest things that came out of the blue recently was Stephanie McMahon stepping away from her role with WWE for a time, as she put it, to spend more time with her family. Now, there's been lots of speculation about what caused this sudden move away and whether Stephanie jumped before she was pushed. Because McMahon had been operating as WWE's chief brand officer, working behind the scenes on deals that would expand the company's global reach and partnerships with other brands. However, according to one company insider, she may not have been all that effective in her role. And that could be the reason for the sudden stepping away. Because speaking with Business Insider, a source within WWE said, family or not, we've got to get the right people in place. We weren't seeing that growth. When someone is moved out of a company, it's usually the result of something not working. We took stronger control of that a few months ago. Now, the BI report also stated that Claudine Lillian, who was hired a year ago by McMahon as head of global sales and partnerships, has confirmed that she is also leaving the company. While WWE themselves post a job listing for a brand and marketing director at the very end of May. Now this quote from the interview chimes with what Vince McMahon himself said on Pat McAfee's podcast. I probably expected more from my family members than other employees. You have to do the right thing for the business. If this person isn't working out, they shouldn't be part of the company. At this time, I chalked this up to him talking about Rumble winner in his heart, at least, Shane McMahon. But maybe it was more about the whole Stephanie stuff if that was already in motion behind the scenes. Finally, it looks like WWE are going to whack another random name on another random star as Fightful are reporting that Fabian Eichner could be in line for a rebrand. The former Imperium man could be rejoining the faction under a new moniker, Giovanni Vinci. Now, according to Wrestling Inc., the name was trademarked at the same time as Gio Vinci, perhaps in case WWE WWE wanted to use the shorter name instead, or they couldn't decide they just wanted to go the whole hog and go with Gionardo da Vinci. Now, while the name change doesn't confirm that Eichner would be rejoining Imperium, both Walter and Marcel Bartel received rebrands before being moved to the main roster, with Walter becoming Gunther and Bartel taking the name Ludwig Kaiser. So there is a precedent there. Wait and see. I, I wait and see. I don't know. I don't know how to end these things. No new wrestlers joined Judgment Day. No titles changed hands. Barely any titles were even on the line. Ezekiel was not revealed to be Elias. So how did I enjoy this premium live event so much? It's been a long road that's taken him to hell and back. But Cody Rhodes is now a 100% unequivocal top babyface again.